Last thing I want to do with you, do this with all the guests, we run through rapid fire best 11. Best 11, first 11. Ask 11, uh, questions, 11 questions. Try and keep it light and fun. I uh, hope they're not related to cricket. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Are you ready? You ready to rock and roll? Sure. sure. All right. So typically when I interview a player, I ask him who their favorite uh, roommate is as a player on tour. I'll, I'll ask you a slightly different alteration to the question. Your favorite roommate or bunkmate in the Marines? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, it was probably, uh, we're not necessarily bunkmates, but it's a guy I spent a lot of time with uh, in tents, and that's the thing during the Gulf War. Uh, uh, a guy named uh, Major McClure in the, in the Gulf War back in, the, in uh, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait. So that was, I was very close to him uh, during that time frame. And uh, I was the operations officer for the battalion. He was the executive officer for the battalion. So he was, uh, that was somebody I really, really enjoyed. Uh, kind of, we did, you know, we were in the same tent all the time, essentially, through that war. Your favorite military base or the city of military base that you were stationed in around the world during your time in the Marines? Wow, that's a great question. I had so much fun. Uh, Camp Pendleton was a great place. I probably did not take advantage of it, but uh, as well as I should have because I was so young. But uh, I think our kids grew up, kind of grew up as little kids in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. So I'd have to say that. All that said, I got I to gotta tell you, uh, my wife and I spent a year living out in town in Okinawa, Japan, uh, in a small apartment. We didn't live on base. That was wonderful. That was, that was a great time. So within the U.S., you would say Camp Lejeune, but outside the U.S., you would say Okinawa. Okinawa, but we were off base doing it. Yeah. I mean, we went on base all the time, obviously. We were a half mile from the base, but off, but it, that, was, that was great fun. Your best or most memorable cricket ground experience, whether in the USA or, or overseas? Oh, USA, uh, there's no question about it. When we had IU Purdue come do the initial cricket match at the World Sports Park, that was meaningful to me. Outside had to be Lords uh, because I was I was in line and they were I was there and some the person who was supposed to meet me there wasn't there and so I kind of got in the line for the tours and I got to the to the ticket lady and she said she looked at me and she goes are you Mayor Ballard <laughs> I thought I'm in London England how the hell how does she know that right. I said, well, yes, I am. She goes, please step aside. <laughs> and then, and then uh, somebody came and uh, took my wife and I on a on a personal tour, took us through the, all the facilities, the seating, the locker rooms, and everything. Uh, and that was a wild experience, and that was a lot, lot of fun. And um, that's, I really remember that really well. I remember the uniqueness of that of that pitch too, how slanted it was. Yeah. Did you go on a match day itself, or was this an, a non-match day that you took the tour? No, no match, no, not at all. All right, your favorite place to eat out on the road outside of Indianapolis? Oh, we're a routine. <laughs> could, it could be fast food, could, could be a specific place that's only in one city. We, we like Texas Roadhouse uh, wherever we go, because we like those uh, that bread with cinnamon butter. Are you a Coke or a Pepsi guy? You know, I'm neither right now, but when I was growing up, it was Pepsi. Pepsi. Uh, but I drink a lot of Mountain Dew. There's stories about me and the mayor of Mountain Dew, but uh, I drank a lot of Mountain Dew when I was the mayor. I, but, I did uh, read about the Mountain Dew. I had come across that in some of my yeah, so, research. But, but uh, yeah, I drank, I, I drank more Pepsi than Coke, no question about that. Your favorite athlete, any sport? Oh. I'm not sure I think in those terms, but uh, I never think of best and worst and that sort of thing. But I, uh, I, I do, I do admire the tenacity of Michael Jordan. But I, I think the beauty of the game for me comes from Larry Bird, French Lick, Indiana boy. And I, I know I am a little biased because I know him, but he was so much fun. And in the last six months or so, I've been going on YouTube to. Uh, look at these little videos of other players talking about his trash talking on the court. And he said, he's going to do this to me. And then he, he did it. I knew he was going to do it. And he still did it, did it anyway. I mean, it's so, I mean, you could just laugh for uh, like 10 hours watching the, the uh, YouTube videos about birds trash talking. And 
because he's, he's a great guy. He's a serious guy, but he's a great, he's a great guy. But I, I love the beauty of that. Uh, my favorite player, baseball player growing up was Bill Mazeroski, the second baseman for the Pittsburgh Pirates, who hit that 1960 homer in the bottom of the ninth to beat the Yankees. He was second baseman, and I, was, I, I loved turning double plays when I came. So that was my favorite player growing up. My favorite football player was uh, Ray, Raymond Berry, the receiver. Colts. Johnny, Bal- Baltimore Colts. Not the Indianapolis Colts. Baltimore, 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 Baltimore Colts. And uh, Johnny Knight is through to him all the time. And uh, he came in uh, a Colts game one time when I was the mayor, and I got a picture with him. I was thrilled with that. Raymond Berry was my favorite football player. Bill Mazeroski, my favorite basketball player. Your favorite – Indianapolis sports moment. Well, um, it was probably the 10 days of the Super Bowl because uh, we had put that together and people, it was such a joyous time in the city and, it, and we got 60 degree weather in the middle, in the early part of February, which is crazy. And it, it got cold the day after the game. It was hilarious. Uh, but people were so joyous. Uh, in the city about their city being on this international stage and pulling it off so well. So I think uh, sports related, that would be, that would be the moment, the, the uh, individual moment in a game or game or whatever would be the, uh, the Colts and Kansas city playoff game. And I can't remember which year I was still a mayor. I do remember that, but uh, where Kansas city got out like 25 or 28 points and Indianapolis came back and beat them by three, you know, Andrew Luck, great guy, by the way. He's a wonderful guy. But you know, they, they always had a habit of getting down and then coming back. And that one kind of went back and forth in the fourth quarter, and we were just going nuts through all of it. And that was that was a really, really, really exciting game. The the, the Super Bowl you mentioned before, that is the one that the city hosted, Indianapolis hosted. Now, is that the one that the, the Giants beat the Patriots? It was. It was, it was. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we... You know, Patriots are not loved in Indianapolis only because it was Tom Brady versus Peyton Manning for so long, right? Really, yeah. that was it. I, I actually admired Patriots' excellence all along. To be that excellent for so long takes something, and I, I admire that. But the quarterback for uh, Giants was Eli. And of course. Eli was Peyton's brother, and there was no question who was Indianapolis was rooting for in that game. Absolutely. No, it, two, the two – most recent Super Bowl wins were, yeah, Arizona, Giants beating the Patriots in Arizona, and then in Indianapolis said yeah. Lucas Oil. So, Giants fan, it sticks out in my mind. I can remember the Rose Bowl in 86, and then a Tampa in, in 90, the other two Super Bowl wins for the Giants. But, yes. I, I, I should tell you, are you're a Giants fan? Big time. We, we had Our family had season tickets for 46 years. We had them uh, going back to, I think, 1960 or 61 in Yankee Stadium was when my dad first got them, and then – we had them up until that that uh, 2007 Super Bowl season where they beat the Patriots the first time, and then we gave them up when they moved into the new MetLife Stadium. And it was a case of if you want to keep your season tickets, you need to pay twenty thousand dollars in personal seat license fees. Oh, yeah. He said, "Bye bye." Yeah, it, it was good being I, a fan. I, I will tell you though, the um, you know when you're the mayor, you, you go to all these different things, uh, and one of them is always the owners' dinner. Uh, during that Super Bowl week, and I, I, me, and I sat next to Roger Goodell for three hours. We had a great discussion. He was, he's, I like him a lot. And all the owners are there, and you kind of meet a lot of them. I met a lot of them along the way, anyway, the previous three or four years, anyway. But uh, after the game, uh, you know, we hosted all the owners in the city. After the game, two people called me or wrote me of the owners. Both of them were the Giants owners thanking me for what we did. Indianapolis did a wonderful job. One called me, one left me a little note. I was, I'm thinking, boy, that's a class organization. That's what I thought. This is John Mara and Steve Tisch or? or... Yeah. 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 I think that, yeah, I think, I know Mara was one of them. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah, and Tisch sounds like the other one. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, was, a, it was a good moment for me. I, I really appreciated them doing that. I was trying to think if it was uh, Mrs. Mara, the, the matriarch, who is the wife of uh, Wellington Mara who passed away. No, it was John Mara. Your favorite pizza topping? I don't eat pizza. I don't eat cheese, so I don't eat pizza. I, I don't know why. I just kind of grew up like that. I don't eat bacon either. I got to be the only guy in the world that doesn't eat bacon. So that, that's I don't, a trick. Drink coffee. That's, that's a tri- that's a trick question then. Favorite yeah. pizza topping? There is no pizza topping. So I'll th- I'll throw in a substitute question quick. Who who would you prefer, Peyton Manning, Andrew Luck, or John Unitas? Oh, that's a horrible question to be asking me. 
<laughs> I'm not sure I should be answering that question at all. Uh, uh, I, I, I can't really answer who's the favorite. Uh, I, 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 will, I will tell you that I'll tell you a little bit about each one to go through, but I, I admire the fact that Johnny Unitas came from where he came from and had that much of an impact on the game. That I thought was remarkable. The Peyton Manning that you see in the commercials, that kind of dry humor, that's him. That's actually him. He's not acting. That's who he is. And uh, he's, a, he's a wonderful guy. And Andrew is just a, he's just a really smart geek. And uh, so, and, and I like, I like all the quirkiness about people anyway. I like all the differences in people. So, but I don't want to say anything favorite because I don't, I don't want to diss anybody on that one because they're all terrific. <laughs> <laughs> a, a geek Andrew Luck. I would expect nothing less from a Stanford graduate to, to hear that about Andrew Luck. He's, he's a good guy. His dad's a great guy. All right. Your favorite movie? Uh, I'm going to have to go with Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Bill Murray. I, I thought that was really unique when it came out. And I uh, I really, really enjoyed that. I, I mean, there's some classic movies I like. Uh, I watch Ben Hur a lot. Uh, uh, I actually uh, I watch it more than almost anybody probably. Uh, I like those old time movies and Spartacus and those sorts of things. I really like those sorts of things. But I, I think for the the one that gives me the most fun on a routine basis would probably be Ghostbusters. So if Gus, Ghostbusters is coming across on the TV and it's like halfway through, if you see it coming across the screen, you stay on the channel and you watch it to the end. Oh sure, oh sure. That's that's your that's your movie. It doesn't matter what stage it is. In the middle of the movie, you, you, once you find it on, you keep it on to the end. Absolutely, I, I I watch a lot. I watch movies over and over again. And I one movie I watch routinely is Moneyball. I love Moneyball. I like that he took it on. You know, it's hard to take on. And uh, in the first, you know, the first guy through gets all the arrows, right? And, and other people uh, have you know make it work, make it work. And so I I I like those sorts of movies too. So. Another great one is Antoine Fisher. I don't know if you ever seen Antoine Fisher. Watch it. It was a military movie from memory. He was in the Navy, but yeah. Yep. It, uh, but that was that's boy, that is a good movie. That is a good movie. I almost said that one as my favorite movie, but that that's really a good movie. Your favorite show to binge watch, whether it's on Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, any streaming service, or if there's some sort of DVD box set that you have, what what's your your favorite show that you binge watch? In the oh, there's several but i i didn't watch game of thrones i didn't know what all that was about uh i because it started I, I never get anything from the beginning but i actually watched game of thrones three times since after it was done i started watching it and i actually watched it three times in the last couple of years um so i uh i again some of that stuff that i watched is pretty quirky stuff uh cobra kai <laughs> I love Cobra Kai. Yeah. I love Cobra Kai. Uh, I mean, just things like that. Uh, I, uh, there was one recently about, I can't remember the name of it, about a uh, Silicon Valley guy who invents a, uh, invents a product, a, an IT product, and becomes a very rich and famous, and then he screws it all up and, and all of that. That was pretty funny stuff. But, uh, but Cobra Kai, I like the Cobra Kai. I hope, I'm waiting for the next season. There's also something called Glow out there, Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. I don't know if you've seen that or not. I've heard of it. I've heard of it. It was uh, when that when the next season comes out, my wife and I will binge watch that over a day or two to get them all done. So, but we yeah we watch we watch a few of those. We didn't used to, but we do now. So, Game of Thrones I I find interesting from the standpoint of uh, the fact that I guess superficially it's built as a a fantasy show, but I think of it more in terms of of The Sopranos. The Sopranos is my number one. But a lot of these HBO shows, superficially, people would look at The Sopranos and say, oh, it's about mobsters. When in reality, The Sopranos and Game of Thrones, I felt, were more, so much more deeply entwined in politics and family relations and just the subtleties of of how yeah, family and politics intertwine. And you know, Game of Thrones, yeah, it's set in a fantasy realm, but... Game of Thrones could be set in 2020, or Game of Thrones could be set in the 1950s, or you know, like The Sopranos is set in North in North Jersey in the 90s, whatever. And those themes translate universally, and that's that's what I appreciated so much about Game of Thrones. Um, you know, the fantasy element was was neither here nor there. I just I just really found fascinating all the the way the political um, 
negotiations and politics intertwined in in, in the it, course it, of. I, I agree with all that. They just use the fantasy, I think, to get the people in, which is, which is fine. Uh, but I, I was I, I always think of those things in terms of power, just absolutely blatant Machiavellian power through the whole yeah. thing. Right? And the other thing that I mean, my son told me to look at it because. Uh, I, I, after um, the, the last se- the last episode of the first season, uh, Nor was it who's the North? Is it Ned North? Who the guy? The good guy who got his Ned, Stark. Ned Stark. Yeah. Ned Stark. I thought I, I called my son up, who's a screenwriter on the LA. I said, "What's that about? The good guys are supposed to last." He goes, "Not not in Game of Thrones. The good guys get killed all the time." I thought, "Well, that's different." And it was different. The good guys get killed all the time. But I was I'm quirky about this. I never watch a sitcom really as it goes. Yeah, I watched. I didn't see Seinfeld ever. I, I've never seen anything of Sopranos. Never, not one episode. I never saw Seinfeld until last year. Uh, I started watching it occasionally. I mean, I, I don't know why that is. Maybe it's some something from the Marine Corps where I wasn't able to watch these things. Either, but I only watch them usually when their run is done, which is interesting. All right, your, your last question, best eleven. This is an Indianapolis special. Besides the shrimp cocktail. What is the best menu item at St. Elmo's in terms of a steak? <laughs> What's your go-to steak? Do you go for a porterhouse, a New York strip, a ribeye, a filet mignon? What's your go-to steak? Yeah, you know, you know, I don't eat, I don't eat any seafood, so I don't eat, ever eat that shrimp, which is too bad because I know that there's hilarious stories about the shrimp at the Super Bowls in Dallas, which is hilarious. Go, go on YouTube and look at Sir Ray Leonard, Mitch Daniels, our governor, and St. Elmo's shrimp cocktail. Hilarious story. Uh, but uh, I always get a filet. Filet mignon, my kind of guy. Like, now how do you get it cooked? I, I'm a medium rare guy. How do you get yours cooked? Uh, medium. I, I'll get it medium. I'll get it. Medium. A little bit more done. Medium's all right. Medium's all about not charcoal. I, some people get it well uh, done. I just, I, just I, I don't it. understand those folks. No. I mean, I don't. But filet, you know, when I go to a nice steakhouse, I pretty much come out with a filet every time. Uh, I really do, and I like it. It's clean. It's neat. It all goes down, and it's wonderful. So. Good. Two thumbs up in my book for that. 